god. What am I gonna do with all this? Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Jess? Yeah. Um, an emu just dropped this off for you? Hello? Jesse? Hey. Oh, hey, what's up? Um, no time to talk. I've got this great idea, though. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. Oh, what? Everyone's gonna love it. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be the greatest thing we've ever done. All right. It's gonna be... A revolution. What can I do to help? It's gonna be worldwide. It's gonna be amazing. Okay. You want me to do what? With what? No, it can't be done. You're crazy. Listen, Jesse, I'm telling you, it's going to be incredible. It can't be done. That is a fool's errand. You can do it. All right, listen. It might just work. Yes, fantastic. All right, great. <sighs> you crazy son of a bitch, I'm in. But we're going to need more help. All right, send the word out. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Little Giant Crafts. So, obviously, if you're a crafter, you probably go through a lot of super glue. And if you're a scratch builder, you never throw away your junk. So, my dear friend and fellow crafter Avril Lasagna was playing around with some of these empty super glue bits, and she realized that they were perfectly suited for making spaceships or other sci-fi things. And she reached out to me and we decided we should turn this into a collaboration. But I thought, you know, everyone's got super glue bits. Why hog all the fun? Let's get some other crafters into this. So we are doing our first collaboration and we've decided to call it the Sci-Fi Super Glue Slam. Because I like alliteration. So we all started with the same prompt using primarily super glue pieces as the main components, or at least the inspiration, create a sci-fi themed vehicle or, you know, machine, robot, whatever. Pretty open-ended, but that's it. Start and simple. So let's get into it. I went into this with absolutely no ideas, so we're gonna skip the idea and the planning and go right into the build. Usually I just use these small cheap glues from the dollar store, but I knew that this project was coming up and coincidentally also needed to go through a lot of super glue, so I bought a few containers of different shapes and sizes and that gave me all the bits I'm working with here. Uh, my first order of business was just to take all the containers apart and start playing around with the shapes until I got something vaguely vehicular. I was also originally unsure about scale, but I quickly decided to make another orc vehicle to go along with my Warhammer 40k orc army. So I put it next to one of my other uh, buggies to get a sort of rough size estimate. Uh, and it's a little bigger, but it'll be close enough. Then I go through my bits and find a suitable orc head. I got these nice orc heads with bomber helmets from Cromlech, and I'll put a link below, but they have some really fun uh, conversion bits. So I use these for all my drivers and pilots. Then I go through my container of miscellaneous junk bits and just look for anything else that might be good for you know, greebles, more detail, whatever. And I pick out a few that I like. So now that I've got this rough body shape, I decide I also want to do wheels. And these caps from a uh, fruit pouch are the perfect size and shape, so I'm going to use those. This main red super glue bit at the front has these two uh, circular indents where you're supposed to push the glue. Uh, 
so I cut one of those out to make a cockpit where the orc will sit, or the pilot, I should say. The only problem with this is that the piece is a little too thin for uh, if an orc were in there, there's like no leg room. So I decided to add a few pieces underneath. And then I realized these blue fan shaped things from another super glue container. Uh, they're like the thing that pushes the glue together to squeeze it out. Um, those will make really good like fins or, I don't know, airfoils, whatever you call them on cars. Uh, so I cut those up. And the other good thing is that they are curved on the bottom. So they'll sit really well along the curved double engines in the back. And then I have another piece from a, a snack pouch. The nozzle inside of the cap is a really good engine block sort of shape. So I'm going to put that right on the middle in the back and that's going to be the vehicle's main engine. And then it's really just a lot of looking at bits and playing around with things and, you know, seeing what I like, seeing what fits. It's not necessarily something you can replicate one to one. It's really just more of a, you know, style, like, you know, see what bits you have, see what shapes or, or what sort of thing you want to make and, you know, just see what fits. One of my favorite tricks that I learned that I use a lot for this build is when you're super gluing two things that either don't stick really well or there's not a big point of contact or you want it to dry really quickly, you can add baking soda and it will basically bond with the super glue and harden instantly. This is good both to increase drying time and also um, to strengthen any connections because there's more mass to it. So for a lot of these parts where like not a lot of the pieces are touching, I, I basically just put some super glue on and then poured baking soda on top and it makes a really nice strong connection. It feels very solid. And then once I'm happy with all of the bits and shape of the vehicle, it's time to put on the wheels. And I just used uh, some dowels for the axles. I had a thicker piece that fit basically perfectly inside the, the holes for the wheels. So I just glued those on and then I glued each pair of axles to the car. It came out a little bigger than the buggy that I'm sort of using as inspiration, but it's not a huge difference. I mean, if anything, I can use it as like a bigger vehicle if I want. One last little bit I really enjoyed is that I had this uh, cap from a container that had these sort of spikes poking up and I decided to put that on the very front of the car like sort of a spiked grill for, I don't know, running into space marines or whatever. Ooh. But I just really like that little bit. And then once the main structure is done, I go through my even smaller bits. The earlier bits were more structural, but this is really more decorative, just little just little things that will, you know, make it more detailed and look more like a machine. And then I, you know, pick out a bunch of potential pieces and then just start playing around and gluing them on. Now, the last thing this car needs before painting is a driver. I've already got a head picked out, but um, the cockpit is large enough that you're gonna see a body. So I need to make a body. I didn't want to, cut up an orc figure and I didn't have any extra body bits, I guess. Uh, so I decided to just make a really simple body with green stuff. I also didn't want to waste a ton of green stuff. So I cut up some wooden coffee stir sticks and I just made a sort of rough framework of where the torso and the arms would be. And then I covered them with green stuff. Um, and then I just did some very simple sort of lines to represent like folds in fabric. I'm really not a sculptor, but as long as you don't get too close, it looks okay. Uh, I also added a few teeny tiny beads that I don't usually like working with because they're so small, but they made good like jacket buttons. And with that done, it's time to paint.
It's really amazing how much nicer something looks once it gets its first coat of primer. It really ties everything together once it's a solid color. It's really nice. Now, what I'm going to do for this vehicle, what I do for all of my work vehicles and work terrain, is completely cover it in rust. And I recently found a, I guess you could call it a recipe for rust that I really like. So I'll share it as we go through. They're all either yellow or um, orange and all mushed together. This is much more spectacular. Uh, the very first step is to cover it completely in dark brown, uh, burnt umber paint. I find brown cheap acrylics in general have pretty poor coverage, so it needs a few coats. But once that's solid, uh, the next order of business is to decide what parts of the vehicle are going to be painted. So you can see here I've got a finished uh, buggy in front of me for comparison. And since I know I'm going to want shades of yellow and orange because that's sort of the color of my orc army, I first paint all those parts in pink because that's a really good undercoat for yellows and oranges. So I'm just picking out random spots that I think will look good with color. And then once I've got all those spots picked out, I add yellow and orange. Um, I go kind of random. Uh, really, this part is up to you, however you want it to look. I just pick out a few in yellow and a few in orange. And the great thing about pink is that it's a pretty vibrant color, so you don't have to do as many coats of orange or yellow, which if you painted orange and yellow without you know, a good undercoat, you know how many coats it takes to cover something. And then I also decide to add a little bit of red, primarily for the front grill. Then while that's drying, I go to my orc driver and I just start painting his jacket brown. All right, back to the rust. So the next part of my rust recipe requires two shades of orange, one darker and one lighter. And really, you could even do more, but I find that two is like the least you need to get a good looking variation. Um, but you're going to need a sponge or, you know, a piece of a sponge and starting with the darker orange, just sponge over all the brown, cover as much as you can. Um, specifically for this, it was a little hard for me to get into the nooks and crannies, but in the end it doesn't really stick out. And the sponge just gives it a really nice spotty texture. And then once that dries, you're going to go over it again with the sponge with a lighter orange. And this time you're not going to cover as much. If you're doing something like a single patch of rust, I would keep this lighter orange around the edges, for example, or say creases where you know panels meet, the edges of objects, things like that. Basically, you want to cover about half as much of the, the darker orange. And then the last step in this process is a heavy dry brush with metallic. Well, I say heavy, but it depends on how much of the metal you want to show through. Um, so if you want, say, a smaller amount of rust, do a very heavy dry brush and cover a lot of it with metal. Uh, if you want it to be mostly rusted and you can only see a little bit of the metal, then do a very light dry brush, just get, you know, the, the, the outermost edges. For this in particular, I mostly go lightly on the majority of the car, and then I go much heavier with the gunmetal on the weapons and the engine, because I figure those are the most important parts. They'll probably have the most maintenance and the best taken care of parts of the vehicle. And then the last thing I do, I paint the tires black and then do some gray highlights. And then I add a few water slide decals just to you know, give it some character. And then the very last stage is weathering. You can either do a wash or you know, use weathering powders, which is what I like for vehicles. So I'm doing you know, a lot of brown on the tires for dirt and then a lot of black near uh, things that would have exhaust like the, the back of the engine. And again, that's, you know, as clean or as messy as you want to be. I figure the orcs do not take good care of their things, so they are very dirty and grimy. Uh, but that is it. Our 
from scratch vehicle is done. Let's see how it came out. Ladies and gentlemen, all yeah. bets are closed. Yeah. Drivers, yeah. start your engines. Yeah. And they're off. That's it. I know I basically say the same thing every time, but I am so thrilled with how it came out. This is really the first time I have ever completely built something from scratch. Usually I take you know, pre-existing toy or a 3D model and add some things onto it. Um, but this, I mean, obviously, as you saw, was entirely, you know, started from nothing. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. I did really have a lot of fun building this, but personally, I prefer having something to start with. I know a lot of people like junk bashing and, you know, building things from scratch. But for me, there's almost too much potential. I sort of get like paralysis from just not knowing where to go because I can do anything. Whereas, you know, if I'm if I'm modifying something that already exists, I have at least got, you know, some parameters and a starting place and it's a little easier for me. It's not physically more difficult than modifying something that already exists. It's just a different thought process, you know? But overall, I am so happy with how he came out. He Already, I feel like it fits in perfectly with the rest of my orcs, and I'm so glad I did this. I just want to give a huge thank you to Avril Lasagna and everyone else that participated. Um, I'm going to put up some previews of what they did, and there will be a link below. We made a playlist that has every video in the Super Glue Sci-Fi Slam, so you can watch them all and see what everyone else did. Lit. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party. Roll up to the party. I have not seen any of them as as of recording, but I am super excited. I'm sure they're all amazing. I'm a huge fan of everyone that participated. But I think that's it for today. So as always, if you want to see more of what we're doing, check out the links below or go to littlegiantmonsters.com. If you really like what we're doing and want to support us like our amazing patrons, uh, we have a Patreon. Until next time, be creative, be kind, and take care of yourself. Is, is this like picking me up at all? I don't think I was recording either, so. That's good. <laughs> and I wasn't really doing faces, so. I didn't hand it well. I need to do them more this way. But we're gonna need a lot more help. My wonderful friend Avril is. Da, 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 da. I almost said Avril Levine for real. <laughs> My friend Avril Levine. My wonderful friend Avril Lasagna. I should probably figure out where the rest of that sentence is going before I start saying it. So, my dear friend and. Amazing! That train one shut up! Turn my phone. Okay. You're still filming, huh? You're capturing my meltdown. I'm feeling so pressured. This is what it means. Oh. Being a crafter. Right, okay, let's get started. Let's go. Create a site. I'm sorry. I just have it a little higher. <laughs> okay, yeah. Is it called kit bashing if it's not using pre made things? Debatable, but I will use a different word. Okay. And is that it before my sign off? Uh-oh. Uh, Ring car escaped.